We're live now to my colleague, Kolim Gambi, who's been on the ground since the early hours of this morning at court, in court there, following this. Well, Kolim Gambi, the news has broken. The adjournment has been granted as requested by the prosecutor, Billy, uh, 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 there in, in, in court, Downer. Billy Downer. Uh, yeah, Billy Downer in court there. His proposal that uh, pre-trial must begin on the 4th of February next year. The trial itself in Ennis must begin on the 13th of April. And of course, the, uh, Mr. Zuma's lawyer saying they're going to be appealing last week's dismissal of his day of prosecution. So still a lot to happen here legally. Indeed, Dan, that's exactly as you've put it. Uh, you've uh, captured the essence of what happened inside court. Let's uh, get some reaction now from the leadership of the ANC. Let's speak to Gwazim Shengu, who doubles up as uh, the member of the ANC. In fact, he's a provincial executive committee member of the ANC in Gwazul Natal. He also is uh, the MEC of education in this province of Gwazul Natal. Uh, Mr. Shengu, thank you very much for your time. Firstly, uh, your reaction to yet another postponement to the trial of the former president Jacob Zuma? Well, we, we understand that uh, the postponement is by agreement between all the parties uh, and they've agreed on the holding date of the 4th of February uh, 2020. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait for that date and uh, any other thing that may be decided upon in between now and the 4th of February, as we have heard that uh, the lawyers of uh, former president, President Zuma, indicated that they reserve the right to appeal against uh, the judgment on the permanence day. So I will, it will be waiting again to see what is the next cause of action. Interesting to see Mr. Mshengu in inside court there in the court gallery that that court gallery was more packed today with uh, members of the media perhaps you might want to argue that because we did see some people uh, coming in but uh, the bulk of the people who are here to support uh, the former president Jacob Zuma are the traditional leadership for example uh, is in course or the chiefs of uh, the Zuma clan they are here they have been a common feature but it does seem that uh, support for the former president is dwindling on the side of the ANC. Where is the leadership? Where is the rest of the leadership of the ANC? Not at all. There is not dwindling. Uh, let me first indicate that, as we know, that the access to court is highly restricted. We get given uh, accreditation and then uh, the organizers will then determine who gets the acc accreditation. Obviously, we had to prioritize uh, the Zuma clan, as it were. But the issue of the support dwindling, uh, I don't think that will be the case. Obviously, there are many people in the ANC, particularly, who hold different views around this case. But as, 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 as one person who is in the ANC and a number of people who, who have been together supporting President Zuma for 14 years who are still intact and we still support him. Let me ask a direct mm. question then, Mr. Mshengu. Where is the chairperson of the ANC in this province and, of course, the Premier, Seychelles Zigalala? Where is the secretary of the province, Mdumsen Ndule? Why are they not here? The provincial chair and the provincial secretary are engaged in another program in Gauteng as we speak. And so both of them are outside of Both of, of them are outside KZN. of KZN, and, and it's a program they could not uh, reschedule, as it were, because it's a long-standing program, and they, ho they had to honor it. So it doesn't mean that because they were not here today, uh, they are not supporting uh, President Zoom. You wouldn't even know, um, Gambi, that uh, even the PEC, DC, uh, PEC of the ANC in Wazul Natal had to go and engage the national leadership of the ANC to say there must be a political management of the whole process uh, so that it doesn't give space for, for, for wrong people, for, for, for counter-revolutionaries, because this case has a potential of sowing divisions in the ANC. What and was that decision then? What was that response to the NEC? Because that's what you went to the NEC to lobby for, that this trial or the platform outside of this trial is being hijacked by elements that you, the ANC, do not uh, necessarily uh, talk in this, talk the same language with. Well, what was the decision of the ANC? Well, the decision of the ANC was that we can attend in our personal capacities. And that was important for us because at least it gave us space to, to then be able to manage that critical uh, space that was being exploited by, by, by wrong people who were intent to sow further divisions in the ANC. So the, the, the NEC is aware that we're attending this case in our personal capacities. But what is important was the ability of the leadership to then manage the 
his peace, which was becoming a problem, a problem for the ANC as it were. Mr. Mshengu, you would have heard the current president of the ANC, Cyril Ramaphosa, in London, where he was uh, uh, trying to garner support for investment into the country. He says that uh, 500 billion rand, that's half a trillion, 500 billion rand siphoned off uh, out of South Africa as a result of state capture. The former president is alleged to have been a key enabler of that state capture, monies of this country being taken away out of this country. Is that something that the leadership of the ANC would want to still support or want to come to court in order to try and support that person? What about the image of this party? This is a party in government. Well, the issue of, of the state capture, as we know, is still a subject of discussion in the Zondo Commission. So it will be ill-informed of, of me to, to make any conclusion around it because, uh, as we know, there's still a number of witnesses uh, that are appearing before the Commission. Uh, more information is coming up. So we can only conclusively or with authority speak around the issue of state capture and the, 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 the consequences of it once we get the final report of the Sondo Commission. And for us, it doesn't really have anything to do with our support uh, for, for, for President Zuma. We have been with him for 14 years and uh, we still believe that he's innocent until obviously and proven that association by, is not by problematic Kitaflo. for you in terms of uh, the ordinary voter out there who looks at the ANC and says, why is this party constantly being associated with uh, people who are alleged to have been involved in corruption? Obviously, the people of South Africa will have different views around this case. Uh, there are those who still believe that uh, President Zuma is being persecuted. Obviously, there are those who believe that he must, he must face uh, uh, the trial. Others are even ANC hoping that he goes to, 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 to jail. Well, what so what the, what the people of KwaZulu Natal, what we know in particular, is that they still hold President Zuma dearly. That is why even during the campaign, the 2019 general elections campaign, he came out openly campaigning for the ANC and was well received by the people. So really, it's a matter of uh, people holding different opinions. As, as we stand, we still believe that we need to support President Zuma. Through. Final question. Mr. Mshengu. Last week, the NPA's asset forfeiture unit came out and they raided properties linked to uh, the former Eteguini mayor, Zandile Kumede. That kind of action, does the ANC support that kind of action and what, are, what is the ANC's reaction on the part of law enforcement seemingly looking as though they are now starting to gather that speed around prosecutions, is that something that you are happy to see as the leadership of the ANC in the province? We respect all institutions of law and uh, all law enforcement agencies have full support of the ANC. Whatever action that they do, which is within the ambit of the law, will always uh, support uh, those actions from the ANC side. What we can caution is that they, they must avoid the Hollywood style of, of, of doing things. I mean, for, from, from where we stand, there was no need to bring a contingent of media people to go and, and raid the houses of uh, the former mayor of Etegui. They could have done so all no, by no, themselves. But, but as, who says as, that as, the as, media was prompted by them? They could have gotten wind of this on their own accord. Members of the media, that's what we do. Now, we, we speak to people. It, it means uh, there are problems of leakages, therefore, within the institutions if you get the information before actions are being executed. And that will be the problem, and it will damage the, 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 the image of the NPA as well as the old uh, uh, enforcement agencies, if you are to get information beforehand. Are we going to hear the same argument from the ANC that the Hawks are now conducting themselves in the same fashion as uh, previously seen by the Scorpions? No, we have, just, defunct Scorpions. we have just warned that uh, they must avoid any Hollywood-style way of executing uh, whatever decisions that they have that they have that, 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 that they have taken that is all that we have made but we are not venturing into any accusations and and, and, and all of that we believe that they whatever they have decided they did so after a uh, careful consideration of all the prescripts of the law as well as the, all the rights of the of the uh, persons involved in, in in the case so we we really don't have any, any uh, quarrels uh, except that they must avoid uh, the Hollywood style.
of executing their decisions. All right. Kwasi Mshengu, thank you very much for your time. Dan, I'm not sure how much you have on your side. There is a legal expert that we've also lined up, but depending on how far you would want us to take this, you, you'll be the, the guider as to whether we can continue this conversation. Well, as the media elder, I'll guide you, Mgambi. I also have a, <laughs> I also have a legal expert in the studio, but I'm very interested to hear from a lawyer who's on the ground. If you could keep it very brief, let's get some views from your legal experts first before we come back to court. We are tight for time, so keep it short, but it's very important that our viewers get a sense from somebody who's there with you what has just transpired in court. Mm. All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for indulging us, Dan. Uh, Mr. Zigalala joins me now. He is uh, a legal expert. So thank you very much uh, for your time. As a person who's uh, following this case, the former president, I think uh, what is of interest is that um, he's a person who appears to want to uh, appeal the ruling from last week, Friday. And at the same time, though, he keeps bringing up the issue of uh, dwindling resources from his side, basically doesn't have money. The question was asked, actually, by the very colleague I'm talking to in Studio Dan, that if the former president says he doesn't have money, firstly, why does he continue to appeal? Why doesn't he just let the trial continue? But at the same time, if he doesn't have money, legal aid is there. Why doesn't he approach legal aid? So let's start with the first question. Good morning to you and to your viewers. Maybe let's look at it from a perspective of saying he wants justice to be served. Even though he wants his day in court, he wants the process to get his day in court to be a fair one, to be one that is uh, legally inclined and to be one that is not biased in any particular way. So the process of getting his day in court must also be one that is clear to be balanced and is not prejudiced in any way, whether to him or to the NBA. All right, the second element of my question. Please repeat. Well, the question around why doesn't he approach legal aid if he says he doesn't have money to pay for his trial? I, I, I think that would be a question that would be better answered by him. However, I think he has acquired or has the best legal minds at the moment. They have provided a job to, to, to him that would say in our standards is, is up to scratch. And he has been able to ventilate or present his side in a much more fair and a much more represent, representable manner. All right. Thank you very much for your time. That's a, a legal analyst here in Gwazul Natal, Mr. Zigalala. Dan, it's over to you.